Hi and welcome to this last part of our very exciting series of tutorials about uh, core data driven applications. In this part I'm going to show you how we can use our awesome core data helper class um, to use it uh, for handling, saving um, and retrieving data from our core data database. Before we go ahead with that, I'd like to uh, make some modifications here in the core data helper class. Um, as I remembered, this, um, this code here um, is only working well on OS 10. So to, um, um, to, to make it work in, in iOS, just replace it with, uh, this kind of code here. We will return the home directory of, um, of our, um, of our, um, of our app and append a string called library private documents. This makes sure that we, um, we save our database SQLite file in, um, in a folder which is um which is then be accessed later uh, when we use our core data database now um to use our um to use our core data helper class it is um always uh, necessary to import it however if you are using uh, core data in your own application, then you might come across um the situation that you have to uh, import. Uh, your core data helper in a various number of, of classes in many view controllers, for example, um, to make this a little easier and to give you a little support for not have to remember this all the time. I suggest putting the core data helper in the prefix header of your application. And this, um, prefix, uh, prefix header is uh, located in the supporting files and we can just add this little import line um, core data helper dot h um, to this prefix header and this um, this actually does nothing else but to import this class to all of your other classes and because we are going to use the entities that we have created in the first um, in the first tutorial um, we can also import them here so person.h and um, postal address.h. And those classes are now imported to all of our other classes. So we can go ahead to the app delegate um, .m and in this tutorial we are going to write all the code in the application did finish launching with options method because this method is always called when you launch your iOS application and we do not need some fancy uh, UI or buttons or anything like that we will just concentrate on um, on doing some cool core data stuff so to work with core data you have seen that we always need our core uh, our managed object context which is on the top level of our core data stack so we will go ahead and create a ns managed uh, object context and call this context and now we can use our core data helper to give us this core data stack back so we will use our core data core data helper, which isn't visible with code completion at the moment. I have to build the application first. And now we can access the core data helper and say managed object context. As you can see, we do not have to create an object of our core data helper class because we have created class methods. And this is really cool because we can just access these methods um, by saying core data helper manage object context. And to create and now to create managed objects of our entities, as you remember from the first tutorial, there are these two entities. And by clicking on editor, create NS managed object subclass, we um, Xcode created these classes for us, person and postal address. And now we can use those classes to work with our database. And this is the real magic of core data. So um, let's go ahead, create a person. And again, use one of our methods that we um, created in the last tutorial and say insert insert manage object of class. And now we have to use the class name of our entity. So um, just we just go ahead and use the person class 
and in which managed object context do we want to insert this, um, this managed object? Well, in the context we just created. And now we can use this managed object person and fill it with some data, like a name. We can just say here John Price, for example. And as you can see, you can work with core data the same way you work with your own classes or with any Objective-C class. You just have to create a managed object by using the core data helper and then um, add the data you want. And the last thing you need to do um, is to save it. So we will again call our core data helper, save manage object context, context, and that's it. And to check this out, whether it works, let's just run the application. If we get no error, everything worked out well, because you remember when we created our core data helper, we put in these NS logs on the different places where you can encounter uh, any kind of error. So we have created our first managed object, put it into our database, and now it's time to see if uh, something is saved. So let us um, comment out this few lines of code. Um, and let's add um, some new code which retrieves the data from our database. And when you take a look at the core data helper, the method which fetches the entities from our database returns an NS array. So we will just create an NS array, call it items, and again use our core data helper and call the fetch entities for class method. And for what class do we want to get entities? Well, for our person class. We do not want to specify a predicate at this time um, and we want to um, look for these items in our context. And now all the items, which is just one in our case at the moment, are returned from the database and put into this array. And to access it, it's um, quite a good idea to use a for loop. So let's uh, create this loop, um, use our person um, person class, and let's look for um, persons in our items. And now we can say ns log person and now can access the name of our person just like in any other class. And that's truly magical. And if everything worked, then when we run our application, we should see our John Price here in the console. And indeed, the person John Price was, um, is printed out in the console. And this is really magical. So these are the basics of um, card data uh, programming and this um, core data helper class enables you to use core data in a very, very easy way.